His wonders to perform. His wonders to perform. God wants to work. I feel the Holy Spirit so strong. So strong. And where do you think God wants to perform? In this country. In this nation. This is the first Sunday of the month. And we, as Spirit of Life Church, are on a campaign to wake up America. We are just a small part of such a big picture to wake up America for God. America must wake up. And we have all got to take our places. And we all need to make the decision, would I give my life for Christ? Would I? Would I? Could that happen in America? Who knows? I don't know. I'm just telling you that this song, God is saying that he wants to do miracles and signs and wonders in this land. And it takes the believers. We need to be praying. We need to make sure our lives are turned over to Christ no matter what the cost. And after I woke up from that dream, I just wept and I said, God, is there something in me that would turn against you in the last hour? Is there something evil inside of me that I'm not aware of? Because you think you know your heart, but you don't. Anybody can have a church. Anybody can preach a sermon. Anybody can witness. But when your life is threatened or you, one of your children, think about this. You say that can't happen. It, what do you mean it's happening today, right now? In other places in the world, it's already happening. People are giving their lives up for the cause of Christ. What makes us think that America will escape such a judgment? We don't know. We need to be determined. Will you be passionate about the cause of Jesus Christ? Young people, middle-aged, old, all of us, will we be passionate for the cause of Christ? Will we come in agreement and pray for this nation? Look at that. Can you imagine if churches in every state of America, for the first Sunday of every month, begin to pray? Can you, how many churches are in just one state? Can you imagine what will sweep across this land if we all get passionate? Do you think it can happen? You tell me how one man, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, was passionate in one little state, Israel. And how he had 12 men that could turn the whole world upside down. How did that happen? Because Jesus was passionate about the cause. He was passionate to fulfill it. You and I, salvation. He was passionate. And his disciples, except for one, they were passionate. When the Son of Man, here's the question. When the Son of Man returns in the clouds in like manner in which he left... Because the way he left is the way he's coming back again. When the Son of Man comes back again, will he find faithful men and women in the earth? Will he find people of faith? Will he find men and women of such strong faith and conviction that nothing's going to move them from their marriages, from their families, from their churches? Because they're not weak need. Lily-livered believers. They're strong in the faith. They know in whom they believe. And it's like that song we used to sing years ago, I shall not be moved. You know, though he slay me, I shall not be moved. Believers have to come to him by faith. You confess Jesus Christ, you believe the word of God by faith. And if your faith is being worn out, if your faith is being displaced, and your faith can be displaced when you fall in love with other things, when other things are more important to you, when it's more important to get home because of the football game, you've fallen out of love with Jesus because the football game is now more important. And it could be a baseball game. It could be golf. It could be fishing. It could be anything that displaces your love for God, for family and his church. Because our priorities have been misplaced. Have, has anybody here ever been misunderstood? 
and it's easy to be misunderstood. But, you know, sometimes we can pray prior to opening up our mouth and say something as simple as, Oh, Lord, please don't let me be misunderstood. I'm just a soul whose intentions are good. And I believe every one of you have good intentions concerning the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I believe every one of you have to have a prayer that says, do not let me be misunderstood. Because our message has to be concise. It has to be with precision and with accuracy so that we can hit the mark that God wants to hit on the next encounter that you have with somebody. It is my vision that other churches will pick up the vision and begin on the first Sunday of every month on their marquees, on their church signs, say, what this nation needs is an awakening to God. It is my vision, it's my passion to see other churches rent billboards and put it up out there. What this nation needs is awakening to God. We sing songs like this, and you know what our mind goes to? We think personally. We think God's going to do wonders and, and, and signs in our own personal life. That is, a, And if you'll be honest with me, you'll say that was the truth. You were thinking about yourself if you were honest. But the picture is so much bigger than you and I, personally. Does that mean God doesn't want to do signs and wonders in our life? No, of course he does. He loves us. He's hopelessly in love with us. But God doesn't want us to stop with us. He wants us to see them.